A morsel of sausage, my friend. Um, nay, sooth, my taste is not one from your swine. Shylock ye be! Jewish, our faith is true! Oh, nay, nay, I am no Jew. I merely find the swine unpalatable. Why dost thou? Swine, odiferous, filthy vermin. On cleaner things my tongue shall rest. For if I were to dine on filth, might as be had an airy carriage rut. Eat for free. <laughs> Pork, odiferous, yes. But tis a sweet scent akin to the rich, bold flavor. For sausage and offal and blood pie are a delight to the eyes, palate, and guts. And the rat of the street may seep the oil of ambrosia from its every limb. Food for the gods, mayhap, ah, oh, certain the king. Yet my tongue wouldst know not, for the beast of the soul root of pox, pestilence, and plague. Filth, cuz, and swine of no higher station. Those beasts that lie with shite, their snouts deep dug, seeking a root or morsel deep within, giving no thought, nay, none. To the cycle of food to shite, of shite to food, of snout to mouth and ass and back again. <laughs> Nay, cuz, the beasts are low, filthy, and my own tongue will not eat that which does not know its own shite from its own snout. Tis foul and beneath me. And the gentle, loyal cur, the sweet hound, these beasts eat too the fruits of their ass. Verily, so I dine not on cur, friend. <laughs> Nay, nor shall I. My meaning, though, brother, goes to your claim of filth. Think on this. Would the dog that sleeps at the yeoman's fireside be pox-ridden, senseless, and filthy too? Oh, filthy, nay, for that word is strong and mean. Unclean, yes. Yes, the low the cur is most unclean, but low the cur possesses charm. His personality overcometh the foul diet he takes. The personality is worth many a purse of coin. He, what you speak is truth, good friend, then the swine are cursed by God, and the savage want for good taste, good charm, and a sharp wit. With these, the swine, may they be damned no more? Deny not the words you speak. Below the swine I call goodly, those will require the, ch the charm and flair of the finest ladies, ere to grace the king's garden in May. <laughs> it is good to see you laugh, my friend. Thou hast been quiet. Pray, what art thou thinking of? Been wondering upon the nature of the miracle we witnessed to this morn. Friend Jules, thou may have witnessed a miracle. I saw not but a strange sight to mine eyes. Some knowest the meaning of miracle. An act performed by the Lord God Almighty. And what, pray tell, does thou consider an act performed by the Lord God Almighty, friend Vince? I should think that the Lord God Almighty makes possible that which is not. Then that, friend Jules, is an act he has performed. I believe not we had witnessed such an event this morn. I refuse it. Thou art looking upon this in the wrong way, friend Vince. Mayhap Lord God kept us from harm. Mayhap he made wine from this ale. Tis not what has occurred that gives me pause for thought. I felt the hand of God upon my very soul. Pray tell why. I've not the answer. It vexes me. Thou speaketh truth. Thou ceasing thy ways. Aye, to the choice I am most certain of. So if, thou, so if thou art ceasing thy ways, what shalt thou do from now till death may claim your bones? That very thought has weighed heavily upon my mind. Firstly, I shall complete the task to which we are assigned. Then shall walk the land to God place to be where he will. Thou speaketh the life of a beggar. Think on this, friend. Thou shalt be no better than a mongrel or a drunkard who sleeps in the streets and begs charity from me. Friend Vince, on this point you and I differ. This morn was odd, but twere no wine to ale. And the world requires that not all are unique. Friend Jules, please cease these words, for they are strange. If mine answers cause you unease, then thou should cease asking such frightening questions. Pray, when, da when didst thou come to this decision? Was thee sat there, breaking thy fast? Yea, I was breaking my fast, and my mind found itself in a state of clarity. I require the preppy. I shall return.
without giving me trouble. trouble here. I say again without giving trouble to myself and my fellow friend here. Nay, nay, good sir. I wish no trouble here. <laughs> Tell them to do as I say. Tell them! <sighs> Patrons, listen to my word. Do as they say, and it shall be put a memory upon the morrow. Get thee upon the ground now, sir. I'm like you county life for now. Patrons, prepare thy coin and tools for the bag. All right, I'll have any. Come on. Now, babe. Faster, come on. <laughs> <laughs> Yours as well, Evan. Your boy as well, have a thee. What be it that? It's not but laundry given to me in trust. Did to remove the stains of another man's garb? Aye, when my lord would have his remnant cleaned. It's not man's work, that. None at all, in troth. Such ill use makes me half regret my oath. And yet this God, what I look upon. In <laughs> no wise can I help you. Say again, I do believe mine is doth deceive me. Tis not so. What news, my friend? Seems sitting here we've got a rogue who holds his life not dear. Then end is swift and be on our way. No slight do I intend, but menace thus I've oft been there till now. Good Jesus, unseemly is thy tone when men and women alike are held peace, at knife point. Peace, glutton, it's none of thy concern. <laughs> Let no mistaken meaning find rest within thy mind by way of battle ear. Relinquish me that chest by count of three, or I will thy eyelids skewer. Clear? One, two, three. Hold. <laughs> Stay thy hand. I see the game. Tis yours. All pleasure make you avail. Open it. <coughs> Fie, sir! <laughs> this waking vision, is it real? Just rude to see thine eyes have no report to make. What thou seest? <laughs> Such a beauty. I'm nearly overcome. Let loose! Let loose! I swear I will end thee! Now bid thy slather and keep a civil tongue. Cry, sir, peace! Now say it! Pray be tranquil! Say this no spot. harm shall befall you! Pray be tranquil, tis now so! Now swear it! I swear! And bid him cool his burning wits and passion overrule. Be calm, my friend! <laughs> I charge thee, harm him not! Your friend, what is his name? Here's Yolanda called. Yolanda? Pray, now <laughs> tell me! Are we not now as serene as aged monks? in hallowed cloisters house, and profiting thereby with grace dividends, as it give us grave alarm. I will end thee. I charge thee, I will not harm him. No blood shall on this tavern's table spill. I bid you one Athenian to recall, one Zeno, founder of the Stoic school. Let his model be our example now. What temper hath this ancient? Prithee speak. How wouldst thou name his temper? He was cool, he was cool, he was cool. Just so. <laughs> <laughs> Let us all be cool and kind. My coin purse is the one with blasted Oedipus stitched upon it. <laughs> and as you open it, count its hoard. How much find you? I, I guess it ten times five score sovereign. That sum is yours. Add it to thy purse. Consider if you add to that the balance from our innkeeper's till and the tally found within others, it may be thought a sum that many would be glad of. Sirai, pray, let not these ruffians rob the air, make slaves. Oh, thou shalt fight. not, thou Kirby, still be silent and sand down. <laughs> <laughs> they do not rob me, nor is it a gift. It is payment for a purchase. Knowest what I purchase, friend? I, I know not. Your life. If I give it to you thus, then thou and I are spared my need for vengeance for thy thievery. I pray you, do you often read the Bible? <laughs> Not regularly, no. There is a scripture verse. I did commit it to my brain. Ezekiel 25, 17. The path of the righteous man is beset on all sides by the inequities of the selfish and the tyrannies of evil men. Blessed is he who, in the name of charity and goodwill, shepherds the weak through the valley of darkness, for he is truly his brother's keeper and the finder of lost children. And I will strike down upon thee with great vengeance and furious anger those who attempt to poison and destroy my brothers. And you will know my name is the Lord when I lay my vengeance upon thee. I have for years recited thus. Thou didst but hear... 'Twas clear sign of your demise is found in any witch's scry. 
and never had I pondered its intent. So simply fiendish sounds I could utter before I dealt my foes a final stroke that sent them on to God's own realm. But just this morrow hence, I saw such things that would lead me to divine my words and find the meaning of therein. Perchance, I guessed, you are the evil man, and I the righteous man. As for the shepherd, methought it could have stood for my blade. Anon, perhaps the righteous man is you. I then may be the shepherd, and the evil and the selfish is all that stands about us in this world. Such is a pleasing thought, such is also false. In truth, you are the weak, and I the tyranny and evil of men. <laughs> Yet henceforth, I assure you to try now in all my ways to become the shepherd. Anon, my ale's warm. <laughs> my friend, mayhap we should depart. An excellent idea, my friend. And so, let us be gone. All right.